Sebastian Bach has been a staple in the rock and metal music scene since his days with Skid Row. Throughout his career, he has worked with many different musicians, but despite his success, some of his former bandmates have not been so kind when discussing their time working with the frontman. Let's take a look at what all of Sebastian Bach's former bandmates have said about him. Sebastian Bach was fired from Skid Row after an argument with the band's bassist and co-founder, Rachel Bolin. Allegedly, Bach took it upon himself to sign the band on to open for Kiss on their 1996 reunion tour. The problem was, he didn't tell the rest of Skid Row. Bolin was angry and cancelled the gigs, saying that Skid Row was too big to be an opening act. Bolin would remain rather terse through the years when asked about Bach in interviews, usually opting to not comment. Then, in a 2020 interview with the Chuck Shoot podcast, Bolin Bolin would elaborate on his feelings towards Bach, and said that, due to interpersonal relationships between band members reaching an all-time low, Skid Row's 1996 split came as a relief to him. Rachel further dismissed any hopes of a reconciliation between him and Sebastian, saying, I wouldn't say we were friends when we were in the band together. We were bandmates. We're two very different people. Ironically, four years after Bach's firing, Skid Row was one of the opening acts for the 2000 Kiss Farewell Tour. Immediately after being fired from Skid Row, Sebastian Bach would call the band's guitarist and co-founder, Dave Snake Sabo, leaving a vulgar message on his answering machine. It came to a head with a phone call around Christmas time in 1996, remembers Snake? I had forgotten to turn the volume down on my answering machine, and Sebastian called and left this hate-filled message calling me every name in the book. And I'm just sitting there with my jaw open with all of my family. I called him back and I said, I'll never play in a band with you again. Since then, the Skid Row guitarist has been incessantly probed in interviews about the likelihood of a reunion with Bach. Without fail, Snake replies by expressing his disinterest in ever collaborating with Sebastian again. However, in 2022, Snake revealed to Loaded Radio that Skid Row came dangerously close to reuniting with Bach in 2016, saying, We attempted a reunion slightly back in 2016. We dipped our toes in the water and realized that it didn't feel so good. It's just one of those things where we still could not see eye to eye. We couldn't even get past the point of simple texting. Like many of his other bandmates, Skid Row guitarist Scotty Hill is constantly asked about the possibility of a reunion with Sebastian Bach. During a 2017 appearance on another FN podcast, Hill was unwavering in his refusal to reunite with Bach. That door is closed, he said. There was talk about it, the two camps went back and forth, and it was not to happen, so that door is now shut. The interviewers continued pressing Scotty, asking him if the split was truly forever, to which he firmly replied, yes. Hill acknowledged that that while fans may long for a Skid Row reunion featuring the classic lineup, he refuses to sacrifice his mental and emotional health in exchange for more money. He said, People are like, hey man, do it for the fans. Not at the expense of my happiness, no. Sorry, it ain't happening. While Hill may not be enthusiastic to reunite with Bach musically, he still expresses his admiration for the singer's immense talent. He's not just a rock star, he's a superstar man, said Scotty. He puts it all out there. He's a great singer and a great frontman, one of the all-time greats, but we're not working together. Rob Afuso, the former drummer of Skid Row, has not been a part of the group since 1996, having previously refused to rejoin unless Sebastian Bach returns to the band. A vocal supporter of Bach, Rob has said that he has tried to get Rachel Bolin and Sebastian Bach in a room to talk to one another on multiple occasions. I have tried, unsuccessfully, three times to get Skid Row back together, confessed the drummer. Inevitably, either Sebastian would say something stupid two weeks prior and then piss Rachel off, and then Rachel would be like, well, F you. It just fell apart. Afuso confessed that it's heartbreaking for him to accept the impossibility of Skid Row's classic lineup ever getting back together again. He explained, We are all still alive. We are all viable. We are all still playing our instruments. It's sad. It's sad that we had that and we can't bring it back. We had this special thing and it's been taken away. Sadly, this very interview would ruin the relationship between Bach and Afuso. As Bach would tell Maximum Volume, I was on talking terms with Rob until I read this article he on Blabbermouth that pissed me off. So that was the last contact I had with any of those guys. In 2004, guitarist Ralph Santola would leave his position in Iced Earth to join Sebastian Bach's solo band. Though Santola was initially excited to perform alongside Bach, his tune started to change once he hit the road with the singer. When asked how things were going in Bach's band, Santola replied in a lukewarm manner, stating that life on the road with him was complicated. The shows are not put together or run ultra-efficiently or professionally, confessed Santola. Things are done in sort of a haphazard manner. When we went on tour in Europe in December, 
remember, it was one of the most unorganized things I've ever been involved with. We just realized from the first day that things were going to be a bit sketchy as far as how well the thing was put together. Then in July of 2015, almost exactly one year after he announced he was joining Bach's band, Santola would accept an offer to join Deicide, exiting the Sebastian Bach band in the process, all the while assuring fans that there were no hard feelings between the two musicians. Tragically, Santola passed away in 2018 after falling into a coma following a severe heart attack. In the wake of the news, Santola's mother revealed that the guitarist was an organ donor and that he would live on through the recipients of his life-saving donation. When Metal Mike first joined Sebastian Bach's solo band in 2005, the guitarist was ecstatic to be performing alongside such an iconic singer. It's the most rock and roll experience, exclaimed Metal Mike. Sebastian is really excited about the music, and we have become good friends. Besides, the amount of women we get at each show is unbelievable. Metal Mike further praised the camaraderie within Box Group, saying that everybody got along and that there were no unpleasant personalities within the band. Sadly, it would not be long before issues surrounding pay brought Metal Mike's time in Box Band to a bitter end, with Mike saying that he, quote, no longer felt comfortable being in Box Band on several professional levels. The news of Metal Mike's departure came less than 24 hours after Bach announced that he was going to be recruiting a new guitar player for his band. In a statement, Sebastian said, I am looking for musicians who love to play and create music, who need to play music, who live to play music. I cannot make a good album when I have to pay all the band members to rehearse. I simply cannot afford to pay a musician to sit down and write a song with me. I do not understand the mentality of some of the musicians I have worked with who demand payment to rehearse. In my mind, a good musician, a true musician, loves to rehearse. Sebastian's statement made it all too evident why Metal Mike departed the band. He simply was not being paid fairly for his time. When Sebastian Bach hired then 19-year-old guitarist Nick Sterling to join his solo band, Bach said he felt as if he had finally found his own Randy Rhodes. Bach was ecstatic to have recruited Sterling, describing him as exceptionally gifted and possessing the qualities necessary for dominating the world of rock and roll and beyond. Nick is younger than I am, stated Bach. To me, rock and roll is all about the spirit of the youth gone wild. And honestly, some musicians, as they get older, tend to write older. Nick's songs and vibe fit perfectly alongside such tracks as Youth Gone Wild, 18 and Life, etc. Unfortunately, Bach's enthusiasm for Nick's songs would ultimately lead to the guitarist's acrimonious departure from the Sebastian Bach solo band. In a 2020 interview, Sterling revealed that he wrote the vast majority of the music for Sebastian Bach's 2011 album all by himself. Furthermore, two of the songs on that album were directly pulled from Sterling's solo record, without Sterling being paid the appropriate royalties. Sterling alleged that he was not being compensated for the songs he wrote, and that he was being paid a very low flat rate to tour with Box Band, so he quit the group just before they were scheduled to perform on a live televised event. Sebastian was heartbroken by Sterling's sudden and bitter exit, confessing to the Hangar 19 radio show that it was hard for him to talk about the whole situation. So that's what all of Sebastian Bach's former bandmates have said about him. But how do other rock and metal musicians feel about the singer? If you want to learn the real reason other rockers can't stand Sebastian Bach, click here now.